Amen, amen, amen. This is like, I guess we call it session three. Uh, and I wanted to be, we were telling man, we talked about Sunday. And, 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 and the whole purpose that side you saw there was the fact is that, what does God say about you? And you know, I was sitting there breaking in, the fact is that even when you do good, if it doesn't fit the narrative, of somebody that has a negative opinion about you, that want to put a, a, a narrative about you, that, that, that puts you down, puts you back, then you need to sit there and understand. That's, they're not God. The only person that matters is what God says about you. And that's what he does. Even the Hollywood, they sit there and, and try to put down Christianity as weak and, and then, uh, not, not profitable, right? sometimes silly stupid and, and i mean many of us have um, ran across that right and the fact is that we we hear some especially watch out for the fact is of what you hear right just some of the time people uh say i heard uh that 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 this person is is this way and and and, and, and you receive it but i want you to understand is you can't control what people say about other people. You don't have to defend what people say about other people. But I am more concerned about what people say about you. And the fact is that you don't allow yourself to accept the narrative that somebody else tried to give you. That's what we're talking about. And that's what the sub subject was about. What does God say about you? What, what is the narrative that God has about you opposed to the narrative people try to give you? You know, because I, you know, I said in the early part of the sessions is, that when people, the reason why people want to put you in a narrative is a negative narrative to justify the actions that they can, they can do to you. We talked about, we saw in the last week, even when we talking with the, uh, the trial, you know, the narrative was that the, the, the guy that, that uh, was not convicted was because he had defended himself against rioters and mob. You know, if, if, if that's the narrative, then whatever that person does is justifiable because that's the narrative. You know, the narrative of saying the person, the person is an active shooter. Now, anybody trying to stop them, now they become the people defending themselves and become victims. But if the person, if the people are rioters and mob, then they, the person that's being attacked has to defend themselves. And if they reasonably believe that they're, uh, actions justify their uh they really believe it was in danger then they can use whatever force they can to to defend themselves and that's what we got to watch out for because that's how a lot of cases even in, in uh, police shootings is that i believe that this criminal this is a criminal now and because of the criminal then i should shoot them and kill them stop the threat right because they are threats see even the word threat if you've been identified as a threat, opposed to the fact that you are the person who's standing your ground. See, you, if, if you are a victim, then you're no longer a threat. You're no longer a criminal. You are a victim. And therefore, the system has to judge the people that perpetrate it. So I'm saying, look how important it is about narratives. Even when I was sitting there, I told people about the, like the N-word itself. If, if you raise your children, if people raise children to, to, to consider people of color skin and, and say the narrative is that these are bad people, that they, they, you, you're dangerous people, that child is, that's the narrative that the child grows up with. And until that child meets somebody and looks at a person, especially individually, because that's how we should be individually, content, content of the character, is the fact is that people will stay with the narrative given until they are proven otherwise. And in and, and the story we, go, we were talking about in session three is that if they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it to you. Amen? So that's why we want to keep on talking about it. Think about it. I think it's very important. Uh, this one here should be going out on a, let me see, we got a Sunday one, Monday, Tuesday, this part going out on a Tuesday. Uh, and the fact is, think about it. If they do, if they try to create a narrative, negative narrative about Jesus, they're going to try to do a negative narrative about you. 
But how Jesus responded is how you should respond. What does my father say that I am? For you, what does the word say that I am? What does Jesus say that I am? What does the Holy Spirit say that I am? What does God the Father say that you are? Amen? That's how I want you to do that. So this one we're going to, we're going to pick up where we left off at. We're dealing with uh, the, the, the story. As a matter of fact, let me, let me, let me, yeah, I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to just bring it down. We, we, we went through the story uh, and, and, and I'll put that aside again, making sense and understanding God's word. Nehemiah 8 a so they read in the book the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And that's how we do it when we do our study. So we talk about what does God say that you are is to understand what the word of God says you are because that's the only thing that's going to matter. And that's the only thing I want you to remember, amen? So as we've been doing this study, we've been going there, we talked about the fact is that Peter confessed to Jesus Christ and he asked who people think they are and he said, then say no. Uh, I want to go by what, I want you to understand what God revealed you to be, to me, about who I am. And that's how we need to understand how God is revealing to us about each other. And it's through his word of God, amen. We can talk about Beelzebub, and even when Jesus cast out devils, people that want the narrative to fit him being a sinner, him being something other than a child of God, he doesn't sit there and say, well, he must be casting out the devil because he 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 uh <laughs> he is a prince of devil. You mean they try to do it to Jesus? I, I think you just gotta catch that understanding. And then Jesus said, How the body can't say, How could the devil do that? So I I, I want to show that this is what they did to Jesus, they can do it to you concerning reputation. Then we got into the last one we left off at was about Jesus healed a man and was born blind. There was a great miracle. But the, 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 the Sadducees sit there and want to sit there and say, no, he's a sinner. And that's why you got to sit there and check this out and don't get disappointed how people will look at you. You got to understand that God is who you need to recognize his will about you. Because I'm just saying, we, so, you know, you've seen it yourself many times. So we stopped at verse 17. They said it to the blind man again. You know, it's funny. I want you to understand this too. As we're reading that, they said unto the blind man again, the man ain't blind no more. The man was blind. He was born blind, but he's not blind anymore. But the, you know, the scripture said they said they said unto the blind man again, the man, man is not blind. Isn't that interesting? Nor is the man accepting that narrative either, just like Jesus was accepting the narrative before. What says out him that he opened the eyes? He said he is a prophet. Death. Two different narratives. One is saying this man is a sinner, right? And Jesus said there saying is, I mean, the, the man the eyes was open. He said there and said, no. See, verse six, 9, 16 is what I'm talking about. It said, therefore says some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others say, how can a man that is a sinner, look at that, that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a vision among themselves. We talked about that last week. In fact, or last uh, session, is the fact is that they called him a sinner, but they confused about the fact is that that narrative of a sinner does not fit the narrative that we want a sinner to do. A sinner, to, a sinner shouldn't do uh, miracles. So verse 18, but the Jews believed not concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked him again, that's them saying, is this your son? Who ye say was born blind, how then does he now see? His parents answered and said them, said, answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we know not. Or what has opened his, or who has opened his eyes, we know not. For he is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. You know, and, and so they, they're trying to understand and grapple how this sinner could open the eyes of this man that was born blind. Is this man, was this man even blind? And that's how people do it too in reality, right? They look at, they'll say, well, that means, Either, either the situation wasn't right or it didn't happen and we're not going to accept it 
So we're going to try to find a reason and get past it, right? That's what happens even in your life, I'm trying to say. And like I said, if they can do it to Jesus, or if they can do it to something that was done good, somebody did something good, they'll still try to find the narrative that fits them. And if that narrative is negative, that's what they're going to drive home. They do it in politics all the time, don't they? Verse 22. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. But the Jews had agreed already. If a man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again, call they the man that was blind. Now they recognize he was blind. They got enough information there about that, right? And said unto him, give God the praise. Of course give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Wait a minute, you know, listen what they're saying. That's how people do it, right? We, you, you know the man is a sinner. So he must not have done this. But you, are, we got we to gotta approach you on this again because this ain't right. How can this man do this miracle? That's how people are. They want the narrative to fit them, not you. So watch out. Don't let people put you in a box, amen? He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or no, Hey, I ain't arguing with you. I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, <laughs> hey, now I see. Then they said to him again, what did he to thee? How open his eyes? How open he the eyes? I mean, the boy was like, hey, look, I don't know. Well, I don't know what, and that's how you need to get to. Well, as far as people coming in and trying to put you down or trying to, 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 put a narrative or gossip towards somebody, you need to sit there and say, I hear what you're saying, but I'm going by what the results are as far as that person in my life. <laughs> you might want to drive the train. You might want to drive the point that this man's a sinner, but I'm riding with the fact of what I saw. Huh? I'm a witness. I'm a testimony to what the man did. You call him a sinner or no, I don't know. You see, it's like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> because what I what I see is a blessing. And I'm going to go by the blessing, amen? <laughs> That's how you need to be yourself. Man, I, uh, you may call me dumb, but I, we, I got an education. You may call me dumb, but I graduated from high school. You may call me dumb, but I know how to do this skill or that skill. You may call me a criminal, but I haven't broken, I haven't done it, broken in the law. Hey, glory to God. You got to sit there and let your narrative Speak for itself. Don't accept anybody else's narrative. Because anybody else's narrative doesn't matter. I just, I'm gonna have to, you know, because we're getting ready to wrap this thing up, man. Don't let anybody else's narrative. <laughs> don't, don't let somebody else's narrative throw you off or mess you up. Your narrative, <laughs> your narrative is to trust in God. Your, trust, your narrative should have confidence in who you are. And in, in fact, is give God the glory for who you are. Because if you sit there and allow anything else, you sit there and allow anybody else to put a narrative on you, you know, then you get into this condemnation. Then you start lining up with what they say you are. See, they try to call Jesus a sinner. And Jesus sit there and uh, I ain't receiving that. I'm gonna go by what the will of my father is. Let his will be done. And that's what I'm trying to say for you. Even when you get the Lord's prayer, it says, our father, which I have a hollow be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, amen? And that's how you need to look at it. His will be done in your life. And then, you know, have confidence in yourself and, 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 and allow yourself to be defined by you then if nobody else amen because people are always trying to put a narrative on you you got to sit there and say i'm not accepting that i i'm not going that way i'm going on the narrative that's given to me by my father in heaven i am going to trust in the lord with all my heart with all my soul and all my mind amen i am going to love the lord that god 
I'm going to love my neighbors myself. And see, that's what God says. Trust in the Lord, man. That's where your blessing comes from. What does God say? What God says about you? And that's who you need to receive. If you don't know anything else, trust what God says about you. Whether you're black, white, amen. God bless. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Go ahead and uh, stop this session, and we'll pick up in the next session. But you know, I'm gonna say, man, I hope you're getting it. I hope you're getting it. My narrative is God's narrative about me. Your narrative is the narrative that God gives you. Don't let somebody call you a sinner. Don't let somebody call you a failure. You are a winner in Christ Jesus. And you can do all things through Christ. Amen? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause and get ready to go for the, uh, the fourth session. Okay? All right. Stay blessed.